for satellite communications in a scenario and the talk will cover this specific subtitles historical background in india's steps in uh, and advances in satellite communication advantages in satellite communication the satcom technology per se applications and the future possibilities and challenges before that it is the, it is about the prophecy an uh, artificial satellite at the correct distance from the earth making one revolution every 20 hours would remain stationary about the same spot and would be within the optical range of the third of the earth surface three such repeaters placed 120 degrees apart in the correct correct orbit to give continuous communication this is by arthur clark now looking at the history the very first satellite in the world was the sputnik 1 and that was launched from russia in 1957 and it lasted for just about 3 4 months till january 1958 it was not doing any communication but it was doing some atmospheric studies the world's first communication satellite was telstar 1 launched from us in mid 62 by the Delta rocket and it was developed by AT&T was used to test basic features of satellite communications and the first, that was an experimental satellite now the operational satellite was early bird also known as intelsat 1 in the year 1965 it was followed by other subsequent uh, satellites in the operational series and uh, these were providing services in the western world of uh, us and part of uh, europe then they expanded the services to provide us for the entire globe and thus intelsat was the first global satellite service provider and in india even before we have made the satellites Uh, we started making satellite applications the first satellite applications was the satellite instruction television experiment in 1975 for, for broadcasting educational tv it lasted for one year and we made use of the bomb satellite a6 uh well uh, son sir just a moment i'll request all people to mute their uh, mics so that there is no disturbance uh, yes i am also getting disturbances <clears throat> the transmission to the satellite were from ahmedabad air station and the delhi air station and it was in 6 gigahertz and the downlink to the user was in 860 megahertz to a 3 meter dish antenna and a front end converter which was converting the rf to vf and then to uh, video and audio signals it was interfaced with the tv sets in 2400 village tv sets established in panchayat uh, offices or schools or and in some public places and the next uh, a satellite communication experiment was called as step it was a two years experiment from 1977 it was with the help of uh, the franco german satellite called as uh, symphony and uh, this satellite was used for conducting experiments using tdm in time division multiplexers scpc signal channel per carrier and then the emergency communication terminals suitcase type which can be airlifted and also road transportable uh, track and uh, used for live broadcast from the venue of the activity to uh, a central place from there in those days there was no satellites from there through terrestrial media it is to be broadcast and this was a satellite <coughs> which helped us connect link the satellite ends with the local telephone exchanges and carry out the voice communication tests and this is the background of the communication experiments then followed the 
actual realization of the communication satellite per se. The communication satellite was made by India was called as Apple. Apple stands for Alien Passenger Payload Experiment Satellite. Uh, it was totally an indigenous uh, design, build, test, and launch and operationalize in the geostationary orbit. It was launched from Kuru, South America, French Guiana, in the uh, middle of uh, 1981. It had an in-orbit life of two years. It carried VHF and C-band payloads. And uh, India, the ISRO, could conduct experiments with the satellite operations as well as with the communication payloads, very similar to what we did with the Franco-Germany Symphony satellite in the step project. Then followed the operational satellite system because as, a, as we were progressing with the experimental satellite Apple, already background work was going on for establishing an operational satellite system in India, uh, which was established in the early 1980s. And it actually became operational with the launch of INSAT 1B in the year 1983. This satellite, INSAT 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, four satellites in the series, carried payloads in C band, S band, and UH band. They provided operational services to the country in the telecommunication, television broadcasting, radio broadcasting, meteorological services. The satellite, however, was not made in India, but it was made as per ISRO's payload service requirements and functional specifications. It was built by an American industry called as Ford Aerospace Communication Corporation in those days. Now it has changed its name into some other thing. So that was the first procured satellite used for providing operational services, communication services in the country. In the, in the meanwhile, India was also indulged through ISRO for indigenously designing, developing a communication satellite. And this effort fructified in the middle of 1992 with the INSAT 2 series. INSAT 1 series were procured, INSAT 2 series were totally made indigenous. The INSAT 2A came into operation in mid-1992. Then onwards, we had the INSAT series, INSAT 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, the INSAT 3 series, INSAT 4 series, and then we changed the track to GSAT series because at that time it was uh, envisaged that all GSATs would be launched with the, our own uh, launch vehicle GSLVs. So, with each of the satellites, we were uh, progressing in leaps and bounds in adopting new designs, new technologies, providing new payload capabilities and improving the service quality with each of them. And we have launched so far uh, from 1992, it's almost uh, about 30 years now. We have launched 43 communication satellites, out of which some of them have reached the end of life and 25, nearly 25 to 27, I believe, are currently providing operational services. This number of satellites are providing to the country about 200 communication transponders in different frequency bands. When we say one transponder, it's we talk about the equivalent of 40 megahertz bandwidth. Now, why a satellite? Why we have to put so much effort and uh, in, in funds into the realization of a satellite? Because it has its own advantages. First is the cost of effectiveness as compared to terrestrial systems, the distance independent communication links one can reach from Delhi to Bangalore or one can reach from Delhi to uh, Andaman Nicobar. Large area coverage irrespective of terrain conditions, whether it is Kashmir or the ocean regions, the islands surrounded by the ocean regions or deserts or mountainous regions, 
the large area coverage irrespective of the terrestrial conditions, ease of configuring and expanding networks, quick reach independent of distance, and coverage of land masses that are not our own subject to regulations. We can go to Middle East or we can go to South East or Far East or Australia. We can shape the coverage of the antennas to reach these land masses subject to, of course, regulations, the frequency regulations, the approval for expanding our coverage over those areas. Now, the, that is the, uh, the, those were the uses of the satellite communication. Let us see the overview of the configuration of a satellite communication system. You have to have the ground stations, the uplink ground station and the downlink ground stations. You have the satellite uplink orbit. For that, you have to design a satellite to launch the satellite, put it in geostationary orbit with the payloads. Then, of course, you have the user end, the user end, which is the baseband signal, which could be in analog format or digital format. These signals have to be modulated and if necessary multiplexed if there are more number of users and then the modulate, multiplexed and modulated signal is uh, put on the IF level and then it is transmitted to the transmitting uplink ground station there it is converted into RF level at the RF level it is accessing the satellite what is the RF level? I will come to that. What are the RF levels? I will come to that. Similarly, on the downlink, the RF signal from the satellite transponder comes down to the downlink station. From the downlink, downlink station, it is interfaced with the user end by converting the RF signal to IF level. Then the IF level goes to the user end uh, D mod and D max. Then it is the baseband of in analog or digital format is extracted and used by the user. This is the overall link, overall configuration. <coughs> now, sitting on the satellite, the block schematic looks like this. There is a receiving, uplink receiving antenna, there is a downlink receiving, transmitting antenna, and there is a repeater box. Many times the uplink antenna, the downlink antenna can be one single antenna with of course an isolation provision or an automotive transducer <coughs> or a mix of both. The repeater block schematic I have given in the bottom, it consists of a uh, filter to filter out all interfering unwanted signals, then there is a low noise amplifier, there is a frequency conversion to from the uplink signal to the downlink signal. Then again, there is a filter to weed out all uh, the spurious uh, byproducts of the local oscillator mixture. Then there is an power amplifier status, a medium power and a high power. And then the power amplifiers will invariably produce intermodulation product because of the non-linearities. There is an output filter to weed out all harmonics and the non-linear products, intermodulation products, and then it is transmitted through the transmit antenna to the ground at the frequency after the frequency conversion using the mixer and the local oscillator. <coughs> now, in some cases, the broad bandwidth which is coming in the transmit side as the uplink is split into smaller narrower bands and each of the band is amplified by separate channel amplifiers and then after amplification is again uh, combined as a, or multiplexed to form a combined signal before transmission. This is done to see that maximum power amplification is imparted to each of the frequency segments in the transmit band. Otherwise, uh, because of the non-linearity of the power amplifiers, you cannot amplify very sufficiently to receive the good signal-to-noise ratio or carrier-to-noise ratio 
uh, in, if it is in the case of a digital signal, e by by and not will not be adequate enough. Now this is a schematic of a, a payload configuration uh, with channelization as well as redundancy provision. Uh, see you 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 see the, both the transmit and receive functions are performed by one single antenna at the different uh, frequencies and there are uh, redundancies provided for the receivers and redundancies provided for the power amplifier, channel power amplifiers it can be TWPA or um, the SSPS uh, the redundancies provide that much of reliability enhancement and availability, switching in case of failures etc and therefore the services are much better protected now we talked about the frequencies. Now in this slide I am giving a list of frequencies used for the satellite communication. Uh, the, the frequency range starts from 3 megahertz, it goes up to 75 gigahertz, now it is even going up to 100 gigahertz, beyond 100 gigahertz in the E, e band. Uh, but basically the frequencies are split into the various sub bands for convenience sake, they, we call them as high frequency, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, short wave frequency, S band, standard C band frequency, and then the defense frequency, X band, the defense and strategic bands. Then we have the AU band, AA band, R band, and B band, etc. Uh, the UH of L and S bands have specific service applications like. Uh, UHF, UHF is used for exclusively for data transmission, L band for mobile communication, satellite mobile communication, S band again for data transmission for lower orbit satellites and mobile satellite communication in some specific applications. The general telecom services, the standard C band in the 4 gigahertz to uh, 18 gigahertz is used, that is the C band and A band. In, in the beginning stages, in the primitive stages of satellite communication, the standard C band was used because of minimal free space path loss, atmospheric absorption, and rain attenuation put together. As we go up in the frequency in K band, R band, and all that, the, atmos the free space loss, atmospheric absorption, rain attenuation, all of them increased quite substantially. But still, we are using those frequency bands because the terrestrial service demands at the lower frequency ends are increasing for the terrestrial service provision. And also the bandwidth typically available at C band is about 500 megahertz. At, at best, if you use the extended C band, it can be another 250, 240, 250 megahertz additionally. But if you move up in the frequency band into KU, K and R band, you derive much wider bandwidth and therefore you can accommodate more number of carriers, more number of services. Telecom services have moved up the ladder because of this reason. And now, not only V band, my table shows up to V band, beyond V band, even E band is also being used nowadays. Now let me talk about what is the payload technology. The payload technology, uh, I will talk about the transmission technologies, the antenna technologies, the hardware technologies and service grade upgradation etc. <coughs> now uh, the, in the beginning of satellite communication, the signals were mostly in analog format. We migrate, we move from analog to digital modulation of the signals. As the number of channels were increasing, signal multiplexing was very much similar to terrestrial microlinks have started used, started being used in the satellite communication. And once the satellite communication demands have gone up, uh, the access techniques have also increased from the basic uh, frequency division multiple access to 
and division multiplexes, plexus, both division multiplexes, CDMA, single channel web carrier, and demand assigned multiplexes, the Aloha, etc., are being used as per system needs and designs. To make the communication links more reliable, uh, now we have to consider that we have moved to digital systems, digital communication. So, to make the link more reliable, to enhance the EB by N0 capability, coding error detection correction techniques have been increasingly used and it has become a commonplace. There are various methods of uh, coding techniques, detection techniques, etc. That's a different topic. I am not I am talking at the top level. Now, the further technology what is being used was the data compression techniques to enhance the throughput for a given channel. For example, they used to transmit uh, 4 MHz TV signal in FDMA mode and 140 MHz uh, transponder it used to occupy the entire TV signal. Today, we are able to accommodate 24 to 30 TV channels per 40 MHz bandwidth of communication transponder using the data transmission technique. Uh, this is possible because of the digital video broadcasting technologies and in MPEG and digital video broadcasting technologies. In the antenna technologies, uh, from the earlier days of using separate transmit and receive functions and receive action of antennas for different functions, a single trans and receive antennas have been used. And further to that, the gridded antennas have been used for isolating the frequencies with polarizations, orthogonal polarizations, linear, vertical, linear, horizontal polarizations. From a single shell unshaped reflector to shaped dual gridded reflectors, a realization of multiple beam antennas using a beam forming networks in different bands. And we have used in our in ISRO satellites lightweight planar array antennas for medium power transmit applications. We are traveling towards high power transmission. There is a lot of background noise. I don't know where it is coming. Uh, I request everyone to please mute yourself. Thank you. Phased array antennas for steering the beams electronically. This is one technology which is being used and we have used also. The EARPs in the satellites have grown from uh, 32 dBWs in the initial stages to now 58 dBW in game band. There is what is called as a figure of merit for assessing the performance of an antenna, the low noise amplifiers together, we have grown from minus 5 degrees per degree Kelvin to plus 7 degree per degree Kelvin. The amount of technology investment is enormous to achieve this type of work. Uh, it looks like minus 5 to plus 7, but it's a very great effort and great technology advancement. Uh, we have moved from the unshaped coverage of India to uh, unshaped uh, wide coverage around India to shaped India coverage to shaped uh, wide coverage covering Middle East to Australia to Southeast Asian countries to spot beams with the number of, less number of spot beams, only five spot beams to today we have gone to spot beams with 16 spot beams covering all of India and not only that even the islands of Andaman, Bali, Nicobar, and Lakshwadi. And the technology progress in payload subsystems uh, from the discrete circuits, we have gone to uh, monolithic micro integrated circuits, uh, we have formed, formed, we have fabricated receivers, used them on board, channel amplifiers, EWTAs, we conductive pulled EWTAs from 50 watts to radiating pulled. EWTAs up to 250 watts using fins you can see in the picture down below on the right side fins are being used for radiating out the extra uh, thermal heat directly into the space 
Uh, we have used cavity filters in the beginning, then we have started using the dielectric lo loaded uh, filters, uh, dielectric resonant filters, which has got low mass and volume, and we are using soft filters and the SSPS. We started using only 4 watts SSPS in the beginning stages of our projects. Then we migrated to 10 watts, then 15 watts. The present day SSPS are being made up to 50 watts, 50 watts. That is the moment of the technology. Lightweight materials for passive microwave components like oscillators, adapters, and switches, which also provides low loss so that there is no signal reduction, not much of signal reduction, also not much of thermal dissipation. Uh, we have started using the high voltage bus in 70 volts and 140 volts. The reason is the current through the, the harness reduces, therefore the harness mass reduces because the gauge of the harness reduces and the EMI EMC disturbances, electrical disturbances on the performance of the hardware reduces. Uh, we have started using more of hybrid microcircuits and therefore the mass of the payload reduces. Even system on chip approach for all digital systems are very routinely used. I will also touch upon system on chip application in the microwave circuits. Now this is this gives the view of a payload, integrated payload, and this is a 32 channel KU band payload. This gives you an idea of how the payload, the complex payload is laid out, harnessed through the waveguides. And wherever the power supplies are there, they are shielded wires and properly bunched and routed. And of course, all of them have to be, all the packages have to be thermally treated. They have to be electrically properly grounded, including the connectors. Because of that lack of time, I am going to stop at this. It gives you an idea. And this is the view of the payload of the reflector. And there are fixed reflectors on the air in phase. Three of them you can see. And there is an yellow sheet covered, that is, Capcom sheet covered, thermal sheet covered reflector, which is a repliable reflector. And you see the deployment. Uh, this is a ground experiment. This is how the deployment of the reflector will happen even in the orbit in the zero G condition. And uh, coming to the SATCOM applications, this slide gives the various SATCOM applications that is available from the INSAT operational control system today. Uh, you can uh, read through this uh, view graph while I will be reading some of them. We provide a business communication using visa terminals. There are captive networks for corporates, public sectors and services industry, again using VSATs. Mobile backhauls are provided. Uh, there is a direct to, direct to home TV broadcast services provided. Radio networking is there using which the terrestrial based radio transmitters get the centralized feed. The meteorological data collection from countrywide unattended data collection platforms to a central place. Meteorological data transmission uh, for the weather data uh, from the payloads. The satellite aided search and rescue using emergency beacon, location de determination, and rescue services provision. Satellite based mobile communication with voice, data, and messaging links. And now the societal services like tele education for the distantly uh, located. Sir, sir, I'm sorry to interrupt you in between. Uh, we have uh, very less time, so. Uh, I think we can. Uh, you want me to stop? I'll stop. Sir, uh, you can uh, just take the brief of whatever is left because we have already crossed the time. We, you started late. Yeah, uh, ten we started. Half an hour, sir. Half an hour, thirty minutes. 
Okay, future prospects. Uh, one is the, uh, the broadband internet connectivity, multimedia services, using a cluster of satellites in the low earth orbit, and those satellites are launched bunched together about 30 40 satellites are launched, the masses are very low and the scope exists for a similar mobile service provision through such antennas. Uh, technology wise, the subsystem technology wise, uh, the, the demand assigned transmission in which bandwidth and power are to be allocated based on demand, software controlled payloads, onboard signal processing, beam steering, and secured communication using quantum keys. These are all the things. And of course, system on chip. I wanted to talk it, about it in detail because of lack of time. I am cutting short. There is a work going on on realizing system on chip for all of subsystems. And this will become a reality in a short while from now. And the overall payload mass will reduce drastically. In conclusion, satellite communication has transformed the way we communicate and connect within India as well as globally. It has given access to remote places. Uh, it has, although there is proliferation of fiber optic links, the mobile 5G, 6G uh, satellite communication will not fail because it has got some niche areas where it cannot be avoided. It will coexist with other services definitely and it is supplement and complement with other communication services and to this extent the technology is also advancing it's likely to play even greater role in the coming years thank you